Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another Real Madrid preview This is the Real Madrid preview to Real Madrid vs Villarreal at Of course the Santiago Bernabeu Back to home fixtures, back to home games Of course always um, a good thing to play at home However this is not going to be you know a walkover This is not going to be an easy game because as much as Villarreal have been struggling over the last, I would say, two seasons, you know, ever since they won the Europa League, they haven't really been the same. They've lost key players. They are still a side that can cause damage and that can cause problems. I know they are sitting in 13. I know they have only had four wins out of 16 and four draws and eight losses. But this is not, this is not a team to take lightly. And... We should know that. We should know that. Really. Now, before I get into, you know, the head-to-head, -head, um, I'll talk about Villarreal a little bit in terms of how they've been playing. Because we always like to talk about the dynamics of the opposition, how they've been playing, how their results have been, and, you know, kind of the, the analysis, really, in terms of how we should approach this game. Now, Villarreal have been very up and down, really, because obviously they're also in Europe. If I'm not wrong, have they made it out of the European um, group? They finished top of their group with 13 points. Um, so, you know, they will be heading out for that. And that's good for Spain, of course. The more teams that make it out of every single, you know, European competition, the better. But let's talk about the La Liga form. Because as I'm recording yesterday, they played against... Rents in the Europa League, but I'm not going to talk about that. I want to talk about the Liga here. I'm not going to talk about the home loss to Real Sociedad because that's their home game. I'm going to talk about the last away game, last few at least, which was Sevilla away. They got a draw. Um, we got a draw against Sevilla away as well. So, in terms of matching up with Villarreal, that is pretty much it. They lost three one away to Atletico Madrid. And guess what we did the exact same. So two for two. Um, they went even back away to Granada in October, and one three two. We beat Granada, but it was at home. It was then before that even earlier. Hatafe away draw. We beat Hatafe at home, so you can't really compare. They drew well away. We drew well at home. So you can't really compare that. Um, let me look at even more. Is that about it? I think that's about it, really. No, they, they beat Mallorca away. We are yet to play Mallorca. Um, they lost to Cardiff away. We beat Cardiff away. So, you know, good in terms of that. And that's it. That's it. So, if you look at their away games, right, they've actually done pretty well. Because most of the teams that they've lost to or drawn to, we have done the same. Except for Cadiz. But that's a different story. So, clearly they're doing alright in terms of getting the results. It's just the home games. I think Villarreal away have been better than at home. Home, they've not done much, really. Um, I mean, they ha I think they might have more wins at home. But away, what I'm trying to say is away from home... They aren't bad, if that makes sense. So, this is not an easy game to take lightly. Some players I would watch out. Um, they've got Solov up top. They've got Ben Bereton Diaz. I never knew that. That's interesting. Of course, you've got Jack Moreno. As always, their main number nine, their main attacker, their main target man. You know, you look at Celta Vigo with Aspas. You look at after the Cup Bilbao with Williams. He is Villarreal's best player and have been or has been their best player. And he is that type of player that probably is their best player and probably will score them the goals. Um, of course, they have Parejo in the midfield. Raul Albiel, ex-Real Madrid. Um, of course, they've got Morales, um, Juan Foyth, Gavia from AC Milan. Baena, we know what happened there. Um, they've got Pepe Reina in goal. Um, as well, of course, it's Sopal Torres, um, but they've still got a good team. 
they're decent players. You know, their midfield will be decent. I think Parejo is the standout in the midfield. I think Moreno and Berenson Diaz are the standout in the attack. And defensively, well, Albio is good, you know, solid. Alberto Moreno is okay, I guess. Mande, you know, Juan Foy, Gabia, they're all right. They've got Pepe Reina in goal. Look, this team, if they're playing at their best, with the squad that they have, would be 7th of 8th, right? I don't think, in terms of their squad, they are better than Girona. I think Girona, even even Girona, I think, have a better team, right? But in terms of squad, right, I think Girona are overachieving, of course, but I think they have a decent squad, especially you look at Girona's squad, like, it's underrated. I mean, that team is underrated, but, right? But Real Madrid have a better team than Villarreal, definitely. Barca, Atletico Madrid, definitely. I would argue that Real Sociedad have better. Real Betis probably have better. I would say Real... Um, I did a cup, sorry, and Girona are probably up there as well. Villarreal, Sevilla, definitely in there in terms of squad. Valencia, maybe, but there are a couple of teams in there that have similar squads to Villarreal. That's what I'm saying, right? It's not Villarreal have you know a great team. They are good players. I'm not denying that. I'm just saying that there are teams who have got good squad and who are playing better. But that is what I'll watch out for Villarreal. I think away from home, they can be dangerous. They've got a good few players. They've been doing well. But they are 13th, right? As for Real Madrid, obviously, we're not going to talk about the Champions League because, like I said with Villarreal, European competitions really don't really mean much. Of course, it's good that we finished top, 6 from 6. Great away win against Berlin, but, you know, it doesn't really mean anything. Last La Liga game, we slipped up against Real Betis away. But over home form, we've been playing well in La Liga. Granada win, Valencia win. Real Vallecano, we drew, but, you know, we messed up. Osasuna win. Las Palmas win. Real Sociedad win. Hetafe win. And, yeah, that is that so far. In terms of home game. So, home... Basically a win, except for, I want to say, a draw against Rio, if I'm not wrong, in those games. That is good. That is a good record at home. You need to win all your home games, right? Unless you're playing Barca or Atletico Madrid or Girona. And even then, you still need to win. But every other team, I would say, well, at home, we should win. That's why Real Vallecano was a disappointment. But even Real Betis away, man, you know... Real Betis were probably better than us on the day. We should have won. In terms of not we deserve to win from the game, but we should have. So, to bounce back. Of course, Girona don't play until Monday night. Do they? Yeah, it was, you know, definitely um, a good one there. But we'll talk about that towards the end. So, what why start? Now, I said you need to start against Union Berlin. And the reason I said that actually in the preview was I was thinking to myself, Kepa is now back. I think Lunin should start against you know Berlin, and then afterwards Kepa should start the remaining games. But Ancelotti said Kepa is gonna come in, and he was asked what about Lunin, and he said he can't start everyone unfortunately or something like that. Which gives you huge indications on one Lunin is not gonna play, two Kepa is gonna play, yep, and three. He doesn't really fancy Lunin. Because if he was to fancy Lunin, he would say, Look, Kepa is still coming back. We'll give him another 2-3 to three games to get back to full fitness. In the meanwhile, we are playing teams like Villarreal, Alaves and Mallorca that are winnable. And Lunin have been, has been performing really well. You know, especially, I would say, Robert Tees. We could have lost had it not been for him. And even Granada. So he could have come out and said, you know what, I'll let Lunin play. So yeah, I'll definitely think that Kepa will play and go. Back line is pretty much the same. Obviously no Carvajal or Vasquez, no Militao or Rudiger. I don't think Nacho will play, so Alaba. And Mendy will come in again, I do think. So um, look, if we want to exploit Villarreal, Fangasia starts, right? 
which he might. He definitely have a chance. But you might be taking on, let's say, Gerard Moreno. And he may not be the quickest, but he's able to get at Fran Garcia. Especially when Fran Garcia is attacking. So, in terms of when we are getting countered, Fran Garcia would essentially be a liability when we are getting counter-attacked. So, personally, has to be Mendy. But it could be Fran Garcia. And I wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't mind it. I'm just alright with it. Because most of these 11, whoever p- goes out there, we know that they are probably the best we can have right now. Mendy or Fran, both are alright. I did say, you know, when Fran Garcia joined or rejoined um, at the start of the season that he is going to come in to be the backup to, you know, Mendy. He's going to be there to offer you know, back up and cover. He's not going to come in and be the main man week in, week out. And that's what we have seen from Ancelotti, that, look, Mendy may not be as good going forward, but he does the job defensively and even sometimes offensively. Midfield, considering Danny Ceballos started against Union Berlin, I don't think he will start this. So I've got a typical midfield trio when you've got no Tuameni, when you've got no Kamavinga, um, Chouameni is starting to start training again with part of the team. Um, Kamavinga is still training on his own, along with Vinicius Junior and Artegula. So, those two will probably be back in the new year. Definitely, I think Kamavinga will be back before the Champions League knockouts. I think Chouameni will be back in January. It's got to be Modric, it's got to be Cruz, it's got to be Valverde, right? You know, we're looking at these three as the only three. Um, I would bench Sabayos, I think. That's what he really is nowadays, isn't it? You know, yes, he's a good player. Yes, he's a good asset to have to come on and maybe offer you something at times. But I don't really think he should start. Frontline, Bellingham, need I say more? And Rodrigo was probably the most creative player we had against Union Berlin. So I will play him. And Jose Luz got two goals and was middle of the match and was arguably the best player in the team because he's got two goals and he was clinical now that is what I'm saying right because against Union Berlin it was all about it was all about building up confidence for Jose Lu. and for Jose Lu, he needs to keep that form he just played an incredible game where he has scored twice he may not be at the level we need right now but he's only he's the only one I know Bram Diaz probably deserves something in these patch of games. But, personally, if you want Bram Diaz in your team, absolutely fine. I would take out Cruz. I, I mean, you can't take out Cruz. I would probably take out Modric then, because we don't have a six. We don't have a six, right? So then you probably have to take out Modric, put Bellingham in a deeper role where Modric is, and play Bram Diaz. That's the only way. I can't see a way where Bram Diaz starts over Hosselu. Especially now, because we want Hosilu to build up form, and he's on better form already. So, for me, that is definitely the starting eleven. I think it's pretty clear. You know, you want to go out there, and you want to help players build confidence, and you want to have the best chance of winning. Score prediction. Look, this could go anywhere. Um, I have full confidence because this is at the Bernabeu. Okay, to set their mid table. I'm gonna go simple three one Real Madrid win. Um, it's not being arrogant, you know. Doesn't mean you predict your team to win. You're arrogant, like, come on. But let's hope. But I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Hit the like button, subscribe. The gym is on already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Pish.